Hey guys, today I'm going to be presenting a response to a video by YouTube user The Potter's Clay. He claims that the solar eclipse on August 21st, 2017 is impossible on a globe earth model and is only possible on a flat earth. But as you will see, his errors in prediction come from his lack of understanding when it comes to the magnitude of our solar system and the celestial bodies within it. I'm keeping the idiot meter out of this one as it is actually a good scientific question that deserves a respectable explanation. So let's begin. Solar eclipses occur only once every 18 months or so, and on August 21st, 2017, the first solar eclipse crossed the continental United States in 38 years, from Salem, Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina. This eclipse confuses flat earthers because it appears that the shadow of the moon is moving faster than the rotation of the earth and in the same direction. Now I'm only going to stop his video at the significant parts as this is a response video to his challenge. If you would like to see the original video in its entirety, a link will be in the description. Okay, so we will stop it here first. The assertion that this model is wrong is absolutely absurd. What he claims is happening is that the globe is spinning in the wrong direction, when it is just the point of observation that is moving around the globe. Let's rewind the video to the beginning of this graphic. 
As you can see, the Terminator line is moving west from Alaska to Russia, and it is the point of view that is moving from west to east. Again, at the end of this graphic, you will notice that the Terminator line moves from the Atlantic Ocean towards South America. This graphic can be confusing, especially when you turn off the logical reasoning the moment you think you have identified a problem. But I will give him this. This model does not show the Earth and the Moon with its rotation and orbit respectively. So let's continue. Okay, so now let's get to the fun part. This video asks for a model that accurately represents the scientific data presented about the Sun, Moon, and Earth in relation to their size, orbit, and distance to each other. So while we are going to start with a 3D model representation first, in the second part we will describe the mathematics involved in understanding this phenomenon. So let's start by defining these values. The heliocentric globe model has the moon orbiting the earth and the earth orbiting the sun. Therefore, we will need to know that the earth's radius is 6,371 kilometers, it has a circumference of 40,075 kilometers, and its rotational speed at the equator is 465 meters per second. Its distance from the sun is about 149.6 million kilometers. And now the moon. Its distance to the center of the earth is 383,964 kilometers. And its orbital rotation is 27.3 days or 2,358,720 seconds and covers 2,412,517.5 kilometers giving the moon an orbital speed of approximately 1.022 kilometers per second. So we will show the graphical representation from different angles to show the functionality of the globe earth model before providing the mathematical proofs. Now while I will be manipulating the relative time to show the rotational and orbital speeds, at no time will I change any of the parameters of the model as they will accurately represent what the scientific community agrees upon regarding the celestial properties of these three bodies in the current globe earth model. In this first model, you can see that the eclipse enters into the U.S. around Salem, Oregon. It travels east and exits the U.S. around Charleston, South Carolina. I am in complete agreement with the potter's clay that the shadow of the moon made this particular traversal on August 21st, 2017. I would like to clarify that my graphic model does show the rotation in the correct direction and at a speed of 465 meters per second. I have added this video to show what the eclipse would look like with an earth that does not rotate. These next four videos are from both sides of the Earth and the actual eclipse observed from close to the Earth and from the other side of the Moon. These four models show this eclipse from beginning to end and should not be disputed as an accurate representation of the globe model when it comes to this eclipse in particular. But that's not all he asked for. The potter's clay also asked the model to demonstrate an earth rotating at the proposed speed of 465 meters per second at the equator and the moon having an orbital time period of 27.3 days. So here I have put together these two graphics. The first graphic is from the point of view of the earth and the second graphic is from the point of view of the moon. In both graphics you can clearly see that the earth is rotating at a much higher 
rate than the moon is orbiting. In fact, let's focus on the view from the Earth's perspective, and let's count the number of rotations until the moon returns to its orbital position. As you can see, the moon returns to its orbital position in approximately 27.3 days as predicted by the Globe Earth heliocentric model. This model, which accurately represents the Globe Earth model, displays exactly what the potter's clay has asked for. The eclipse shadow is traveling from west to east. The Globe Earth is rotating at 465 meters per second at the equator and in the correct direction. And the moon is moving at 1.022 kilometers per second or 2,286.1489 miles per hour. While we have met the requirements of the challenge, let's prove that this model not only works graphically, but also matches observable reality mathematically as well. We are going to work several math equations that solve for the distance the moon travels during the eclipse and compare them to the potter's clay value of 2288.74 miles per hour or 3683.37 kilometers per hour. Let's start by defining the time of the eclipse between two points. These two points will be Salem, Oregon and Charleston, South Carolina. We can use timeanddate.com to find out the total eclipse time. The eclipse crossed Salem, Oregon at 12.18 p.m. Central Time and crossed Charleston, South Carolina at 1.47 p.m. Central Time for a total eclipse time between the two cities of 1 hour and 29 minutes or 5,340 seconds. With this number, we can calculate the predicted distance traveled by the moon during the eclipse along its orbit. Simply find the percentage of the orbit that resulted in an eclipse by dividing 5,340 seconds by the total orbital time of 2,358,720 seconds and multiplying that number by the moon's orbital circumference of 2,4 412,517.5 kilometers and we get 5,461.7943 kilometers. When we apply the potter's clay's predicted speed of 3,683.37 kilometers per hour times the total eclipse time of 89 minutes, we get 5,463.6655 kilometers, a difference of only 1.8712 kilometers with an accuracy of 99.9 7%. It is safe to assert that the heliocentric values of the moon's orbital speed, circumference, and time all match the potter's clay's requirements. Now let's calculate this same distance using the observations of the moon's movement through the sky during the eclipse. The eclipse took 1 hour and 29 minutes or 5,340 seconds. Therefore, we can calculate what percentage of the moon's 360 degree orbit will occur during the eclipse. Take 5,340 seconds divided by the total time it takes for the moon to complete one entire orbit of 2,358,720 seconds to get a percentage of 0.2264%. We can then use that percentage and multiply it by the circumference of the Earth to get a total distance over the Earth the moon would have traveled during the eclipse. And that number comes out to 90.7253 kilometers. Finally, we use some simple geometry to calculate the distance traveled by the moon by multiplying the 90.7253 kilometers by the ratio of the moon's orbital radius to the radius of the Earth. 
When we do this, we get 5,474.0379 kilometers and compared to the potter's clay's number of 5,463.6655 kilometers, we get a difference of only 10.3724 kilometers with an accuracy of 99.81%. Again, we can assert that the properties of the heliocentric globe earth models match precisely to what the potter's clay said needed to be predicted. So as anyone can see, not only can the eclipse be explained graphically using the accepted values by science combined with observational reality, but the math not just verifies the possibility that this model works, but proves that the heliocentric model to be a fact and that the flat earth model to be nothing more than just a fictional fairy tale. So I would like to counter challenge the potter's clay and any flat earther to create a flat earth model that accurately represents observational reality. The moon and sun must not stop moving and all the shadows must match perfectly. Provide distances and sizes of the sun and moon as they will be checked for validity and CGI will be accepted. Now I'd like to take the time out to speak directly to the potter's clay. I have passed all the requirements of your challenge. I have accurately represented the heliocentric model's celestial values and have shown not just graphically, but with mathematical proof that it works precisely. I expect some kind of acknowledgement, but I don't expect your praise. I'll give you that opportunity to accept my video before I decide whether or not I'm going to intensely scrutinize parts two and three of yours. Until then, I'm Team Skeptic, and I'm out.